Welcome to the Buck Stops here, uh, the official podcast of NotInHallOfFame.com. I'm your host, The Buck, Kirk Buckner, owner of the site, and I'm the one you sort of get mad at whenever you don't like rankings. We thought we'd try something different today with our third podcast. We are going to do an NBA preview. The season starts shortly, and we're going to start to take a look at where we think every team is going to fall in terms of wins. And I've got with me... uh, uh, my dear friend uh, from back in Toronto, Andrew Richards. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good, good. How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. And as I told you right before we went on, it's uh, when we disagree, we're wagering alcohol, which I know won't be a problem for you. No, no, definitely not. Uh, looking forward to winning a lot of beer from you, and uh, <laughs> let's see where it goes. Well, well, I've already lost some in my first one, so let's see how this one goes. So, the way we're going to do it, we're going to go uh, east to west, uh, worst to first, and I've got some win projections that I've got for each team, and Andrew, you can sort of jump right in and tell me if you think what, what you think I've got here, uh, and whether okay. I'm right or whether I'm wrong. Uh, starting with the worst in the east, it's got to be Atlanta. I've got them win projection, 23 wins. And uh, I can agree with that. Atlanta, I mean, they do have Vince Carter for some help with the... Uh, with the young guys, uh, he is coming off the bench, but there are uh, a few guys on that team to watch out for, um, and uh, I think uh, you know that uh, they're gonna a little bit of um, pain this year for that team. Vince is so far off the bench; he's got uh, so so many splinters on his ass this year. But uh, <laughs> I, I am excited to see him in that role. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned to you, I went to actually a Suns Kings game last year. Oh, okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm planning, hopefully, to do a Detroit game this year, if possible. Nice. So, uh, yeah. I, I was, this was really early in the season, uh, and I'm trying to remember, I don't even remember who won, to be honest, because I just spent the whole time watching Carter, who I think only played 10 minutes that game, but he was pretty right. much acting like a de facto coach, and just sort of watching him just sort of be so enamored and involved with the younger players something that you know and we're and just full disclosure everyone Andrew and I are both Raptors fans uh both Canadians so that sort of clouds our judgment a eh? thought I'd throw that yes out. yeah definitely yeah. Uh, I think uh Vince is actually on um uh, he's going to be one of the few players to uh score 25,000 points this year I think he's about 132 points away uh, and uh, he also may pass, I think, Jerry Russ as well uh, oh. with 325 more points. So it's uh, something to look forward to if you're watching Atlanta, yeah. um, and definitely something if you're a Vince fan to watch as well. I actually was lucky enough to uh, play in a charity game with him uh, back in the day. <laughs> and, and how many points did you score on him? Uh, none. <laughs> <laughs> I, t- I tore my uh, tore the cartilage on my knee. Uh, going up for a dunk, and yes, that was the end of my uh, basketball career. <laughs> Except when you were in Utah and you told people that you that you played for the for the Jazz. Oh yeah, that too, that too. Yes. Yes. Uh, as, <laughs> that didn't last too long. Sitting in the box. <laughs> well, sitting in well, sitting in the box. Well, you know, as as one of the few black people at the time in Utah, I guess you could have done that. <laughs> guess I could have done that for sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, yeah, so and, uh, I guess moving along. Uh, yeah, Carter totally what's your rehab- next guess? Uh Well, Carter totally rehabbed his his image there. Uh, what what I'm gonna so I'm, I want to watch a lot of him. Uh, what I'm really want to watch is uh, the development of Trey Young. So they've made a, that very bold trade in draft day. Uh, so instead of uh, Doncic, they took Young, and you know someone's got to score for this team. Uh, he's good, probably going to be a starter right away because he's replacing the leading scorer of last year, Schroeder, at the point. Yes, he is. So why he, he could very well be a, a candidate for Rookie of the Year, and really that's the main reason. If, if you're like Atla- if, if you're watching Atlanta, that's really the two people to watch. Uh, am I mistaken on that? Because it sure isn't Jeremy Lin who's going to do nothing other than he didn't even get to to appear in the ch- in those uh, Chinese commercials for. Uh, when when they do Happy Chinese New Year, they didn't even put oh, him in yeah. last year. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Trey Young is uh, from what I can see. I haven't seen him play this year in any preseason games, but his uh, numbers are looking good for preseason so far. I think it's about fifteen points, two rebounds, uh, uh, averaging. And uh, but you know, um, 
he is a shooting guard. It's going to be he's going to be guarding some of the better guys in the East. I mean, you got uh, for sure uh, you got quite a few uh, guys playing at that position. That uh, defending is going to be very um, important for him. Uh, but uh, that's going to be a learning process, I think. All right, so we're pretty much agreement on Atlanta. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so second last, I got the Knicks, uh, twenty-seven wins. Beyond Porzingis and Cantor, why why even watch this other than to see what what uh, whether Dolan sort of kicks out uh, Oakley again from the arena? Uh, I, yeah, I agree. I'm, I am. I, I, it's a team I used to love to watch uh, just because I hated them. Uh, <laughs> In terms of Przingis, I think he's out until December. I think the twenty fifth. Right. Uh, so yeah, not much to look for uh, for two of that. I think we think uh, yeah, Tim Hardaway looks like he's a game uh, time decision for this uh, Tuesday. So we'll have to see what happens with that team. I don't think they have anything going on. They're all betting on hopefully picking up Kyrie Irving and uh, Butler next year. But we'll have to see and let the season wind down. I don't see why Kyrie would even want to go there, or anyone for that matter at this point. As long as Dolan's uh, there, why go to New York? You know, it's the Mecca. You win there, you you, you do If you can win there, it's uh, the biggest thing. It's the biggest stage. Outside of L.A., that's where you want to be, right? Uh, Boston will probably, in my mind, come third, and then after that, uh, you know, Bob's your uncle. But those are the places you want to win. L.A., New York. That's the biggest TV markets. And uh, like I said, you win there, you can write your own ticket anywhere, right? I don't know if it just has the same thing. It just, it's just it got such a train wreck appeal right now. But, you know, things do change very, very quickly, especially in the NBA, where when you've got Definitely. a roster I mean, of, what, like 13 players, if, if that, a star changes exactly. everything. Exactly, I agree. I mean, it wasn't too long ago, a uh, year and a half ago, two years ago, where uh, L.A. was the same thing. So anything's possible. Yeah, and we'll, and we'll, we'll get to there, too. That's uh, There's, yeah. like, two teams in the West I can't, for the life of me, figure out where I think I could be possibly wrong by 20, 10 wins. Whereas in the East, I think, if I'm wrong, there's no way I'm going to be double-digit wrong well, wrong in any, anything in the East. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh Coming up next, uh, so third last, uh, so we'll put him 13th, 28 wins, and this one just breaks my heart almost uh, just because of the age I, I am growing up uh, in the Jordan era. Chicago, 28 wins. Yeah, um, gee, Chicago, 28 wins. Uh, yeah, you're right. That's really hard to swallow. Uh, I think... I, I'm just trying to figure out if there's going to be any surprises for this team this year. Uh, I don't foresee anything. Um, no big names coming out of there right now. They're still trying to rebuild. Uh, I, and again, they're out there probably next year trying and hoping to, to land somebody uh, big, but I don't think they have anything to offer them outside of uh, you know Jordan's uh, past uh, winning yeah. uh, with that team. Um what what player yeah. are you really focusing on in Chicago that that you want to see? Like if if you're watching them play, uh, like who is it that you're sort of focused on? Uh well, let's see. With Chicago, I don't know the team very well. Let me just take a look here to see if there's anyone who kind of sticks out. Like like for for me, uh, I really want to. Fo- I, I'm looking at two, like there's two players I'm going to be watching a lot this year. Uh, Jabari Parker, I always feel has, he's got so much, so much talent, but he hasn't sort of hit that yet. Now he's in Chicago where he wants to be, uh, and watch, and I'm really curious about the progression of Larry Markkanen, which the greatest player ever to come from Finland in the NBA, which makes you the nicest guy in prison in terms of equivalency. Mm. Uh, I would have to say yes about, uh, Larkinen. He definitely should make a difference, but I, I don't see anybody coming off of that team who's going to be a pure, you know, scorer or even a leader in that case. Uh, it's like uh, their lack of uh, veterans on that team outside of uh, Lopez, which is, you know, he's been a mainstay there, but he's not the player he's used to be. No. Um, no, no uh, brother. It's scary, but I wouldn't be surprised on some nights that he, his scoring is going to be is going to have to be up in order for them to even compete. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Chicago will be a hard one. Uh, this so I got 
now I'm looking. Next, I've got another sub thirty win team. Yeah, uh, definitely. Bl- and you know what? Now looking back on it, I'm probably going to have to say to you that uh, I, I'm predicting Chicago to end be last place. Really? Yeah, yeah. I'm just looking at Chicago. I just just not impressed at all. All right, first beer. Sorry, first beer. Yeah. All right, you got Chicago last. So I've got the field. You're you're really going to let me do that? Yeah. Oh wow. I like I'm writing this down because I <laughs> tend to forget. Remember I did a lot of shit in the 90s, so my memory isn't quite what it used to be. <laughs> my memory's working a little bit, but uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think I might have drank a lot in the 90s too. <laughs> well, yeah, that that's all I did in the 90s. But that's another story for another time and for another show. Uh, so, yeah, next I got another sub-30 team, win team and actually the team I have the least interest in in any capacity. Uh, it's the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, I feel so bad oh. for the fan base of this team that made that all-in move and there's they, they think they finally stopped paying for it now in terms of draft picks. So I think they're... Yeah. Yeah, and... So beyond watching D'Angelo Russell and Jared Allen, you know, like this is a team that I think wants to try, even though they probably should tank again. But I yeah, just, they should. Yeah. They're really missing that first round draft pick. Uh, you know, within the, the you know the top ten, they need to get somebody in there who's going to at least give a, a chance at the future. Right, and there's not like this is if we were to do this and sort of like based on. What I want to watch, Brooklyn's dead last. I have no interest in watching anything from this team. You can't even watch, like, Jay-Z's not even a part owner anymore, so you can't even get Beyonce in the front row for those little moments. <laughs> well, they still might be there. They live up the street, I think. <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, they're just, yeah, this team, yeah, they don't have much to offer. They do have some uh, decent veterans on this team that definitely will help out help, help the uh, younger players. Uh, Damari Carroll. I mean, he's a really de- good defensive player and can score uh, if he's healthy. Ren- Renaissance um, last year too, because he was crap for Toronto. Yeah, he was, but he he came back for that team last year. and He was actually playing pretty well. Mm-hmm. So that'll be nice to see. Uh, outside of that, I don't see too many other players jumping off the bo- uh, jumping off the page. Um, just trying to see here. No, not much I can see outside of that. So I, I'll, I'll kind of go along with what you say about that team. Okay. So yeah, the next one I got, so, uh, so what does this put, make them? 11th in the conference. I consider them the exact, almost the exact same. Uh, Orlando. I have them pegged for 30 wins. Beyond watching Aaron Gordon, uh, I really want to see Mo Bamba do really well just because how do you not love the name Mo Bamba? <laughs> it gives so many puns you can do with that one. Everything. It's like and, a, uh, I mean, yeah. and we're, we're we're speaking of Orlando. I mean, there's so many things that I don't like about this team, but uh, there's some nice young players there, and uh, hopefully with some good seasoning they can come out. Uh, like I mean, I'm expecting a, a Terrace Ross now with the with the lack of veterans on that team to come out to be one of the guys that you should take a look at. Really? Yeah. I mean, oh, this wow. kid. He has the hops. He can shoot the ball. He just hasn't put it all together yet. And I think he's someone that definitely can uh, be one of the main scorers on that team. Well, yeah, he could be a main scorer, but he's, he's still, to me, he's just a one-trick pony. But it's mm-hmm. a good trick. Right, it's a good trick. I mean, between him and Aaron Gordon, I think uh, they can definitely add a one-two punch. Is, uh, it's just a third option, which is a... Is going to be the interesting thing to see. So, which, which fan base do you feel worse for, Brooklyn or Orlando? Because Orlando hasn't been in the playoffs since Dwight Howard left. Uh, their best player in the last six years they gave up on is now an All Star in Indiana and Oladipo. Right. I mean, like, I, 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 but I honestly think they're a little bit further along than Brooklyn. They have uh, better young players uh, that they've picked up in the top ten uh, in the last uh, few years, uh, but it's just a matter of them uh, panning out, and I haven't seen anything yet outside of Aaron Gordon, and uh, now that they picked up uh, Ross, that uh, anything's coming out of that so far. They also got Mozgov. I really like him. Mozgov. Timothy Mozgov. Ah, yes. Mozgov. What position does he play again? Center. He'd be... Ah, center. I haven't really seen Mozgov last year. He's rushing, isn't he? 
I, I want to say Da. Da, yeah, he's Russian. And, uh, yeah, drafted in 2008, eight years in the league. Really, uh, he's going to be, a, he's a journeyman at best, I would think, at this point. Uh, he is, he'll but... Add some, he, 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 he'll add some defense. Yeah. Definitely some block shots. Uh, he doesn't seem to be too active on on the boards. So he's half a block shot a game. So it's kind of like, eh. And he's not going to give you a lot of rebounds and not a lot of points. So he's just a big obstacle in the middle of the court. <laughs> <laughs> well, every team's got a giant pylon. <laughs> Definitely. All right, I guess I'm a bigger fan of Mozgov and you're a bigger fan of Ross. <laughs> But yeah, yeah I, think, I mean, at least I can look at Ross's numbers and kind of say, you know, he scored fifty points before. <laughs> oh, that, that's right. Uh, oh my, yeah, it's it, it's it's almost like he's the Brady Anderson who, who, with the fifty home run season back in the steroid era. Uh, oh, I wouldn't say that. He still has more potential than a Brady Anderson. <laughs> Brady Anderson still have the best sideburns of all of baseball, but that's that's my story. I'm sticking to it. But yeah, I've got Orlando at 30 only because I think they're a lot like Brooklyn. They probably again should tank, but they don't want to. I, I think they and, really. And I mean, let's let's be honest. Yeah. You, you can't really. They've already done the tanking. <laughs> and, it's gone, and it's gotten right right nowhere. Now. Yeah. Right. So it's like you've done the tanking. You got to be rebuilding. Not many teams can rebuild on the fly, on the fly, so you gotta get rid of those young, get rid of those old guys, get rid of those bad contracts, mm-hmm. and start getting in those uh, young players. So here's here's an interesting one here, and I and the, I think uh, coming up next, the Cavaliers, uh, defending East champions, they're not making the playoffs. I had them at 34 wins. Uh, Kevin Love is right back where he was when he was sort of the main guy in Minnesota. Only now he's got more mileage. Although I think he's a much smarter player. Yeah, but I also think he has a lot less uh, help in the, when it comes oh, to Cleveland this year. Definitely. In terms of if you compare him to those days, uh, I think with Cleveland this year, you're not going to see much happening. Uh, I don't think the coach is going to last a full year. Well, and the, if he does, the, the coach he will just went to Los Angeles. Sorry? Their coach just went to Los Angeles. LeBron's over there now. Oh, yes, 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 yes. No, I'm talking the... Uh, <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> the coach helper. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, so, wow. Yes, that team is going to be... It's going to be hard to watch for Cleveland fans. Uh, I'm going to love it. <laughs> yeah, well, they're, they're going to be so bad, Chloe won't even go to the games. Oh, I don't think she even went to the games before. <laughs> oh, she did. Uh, she did. Who do they have outside of? Uh, let's see. Uh, you have the Canadian on that team. What's his name? Thompson. That, that's the guy. That's Chloe's. Um, yeah, I mean, those are their two best players, right? Uh, Thompson, J.R. Smith, George Hill, but he's thirty-two. Uh, so, like, you know, LeBron. They they went all in for stuff that, that for a team that LeBron wanted to build. But now you've got an old team. That frankly is not that good. Uh, I mean, for me, it's be it's uh, this is a very big year, I think, and because I, I do the Hall of Fame stuff, I think for Kevin Love to show what he's got right now, because he it he didn't gel as well, uh, or it took him longer than it did for let's say Chris Bosh to, right? And you know, I, I think there was more doubts raised in his overall game, even though. Now he's an NBA champion, you know, and he's still considered a very, very good player, but... He is. Uh, but, I mean, this, I mean I, I'm looking at this team, and, uh, I, and honestly what I see is trade deadline, tr- like that, that's what I see ahead for this team. You know, they got a lot of individual pieces that will be attractive to other teams, right. but the, the pieces as a whole on that team are not attractive at all. At all. You know, you know, Channon Fry uh, as a three-point uh, stretch uh, f- a center, he's going to be good coming off the bench for gr- some other teams. Uh, George Hill, again, a good defensive guard, somebody could come in and kind of give you some good minutes off the bench for a contending team. Uh, J.R. Smith, same idea. Good guy who could be your sixth man coming off the bench shooting. Uh, you know, you may not give away Tristan because he's too young, but the, for sure, you got to get rid of Kevin Love this year because, you know, you don't know what's going to happen next year. This guy has had some injuries. 
and uh, it, it, one in, one injury away from losing uh, some good draft picks there. Yeah, I'm I'm fo- so focused on watching actually him play just to see if he can be the leader again. And oh yeah, and you know who they're playing tomorrow? Uh, the Toronto Raptors. Oh, nice. to start the season. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So I, I have Cleveland not making the playoffs. Uh, the last team I've yep. got out of the playoffs, and I, a team I feel so bad for, but I mean. It's Charlotte Hornets. I have 35 wins. It's Kemba Walker's team, but this is this is the exact definition of NBA purgatory. They're not shit. They're not playoff bound re- really either. And if they do, they're go- they're going to be swept in the first round. They're they're not in a place where they can get a lottery pick. They are in the middle, treading water. And there's, I don't know what's worse, to be really bad or to be mediocre. Uh, I think it's to be mediocre is not to be good at all. You have to be on one end or the other, either really, really bad or really, really good or pretty good. Uh, at this point, picking up a good player to to make your team better uh, would be awful, awesome, but who's com- who's going there? Well, yeah, they one tried that with there. Dwight Howard, who, yeah, and we'll get to him later, talking about right. pylons. Yeah, so it's like... Who wants to go there? Uh, what what does that team have to offer? I mean, uh, it's it's a lot of good parts again, but not enough of them. But you know, I was thinking, Andrew. Look at the two biggest athletes that we sort of grew up with in terms of like the mm-hmm. super athletes: uh, Jordan, Gretzky. Both the greatest right. players that they ever of, of their sports, arguably. Uh, I, I can argue that Gretzky wasn't, but that's another debate for another time. Because Gretzky was certainly allergic to defense, but that's I mean, yeah. But it doesn't matter when you score five. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, that's true. That's true. But as executives, they both are shit. Yeah, Gretzky could have been possibly the worst NHL coach. I, I can just imagine Gretzky as a coach. Well, you just sort of like do the dipsy doodle, and there you go. You just put the puck in the net, and hey, eh? <laughs> <laughs> just shoot it like this. Yeah, and, 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 you're like give me the give me the stick. I'll show you how to do it. I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, and Kwame I mean, Brown still has nightmares about Michael Jordan. <laughs> uh, a lot of people have nightmares about Michael Jordan. Uh, yeah, true. Uh, yeah. So, and, and that's it's sort of funny. Like, I never would have thought that. Like, I guess as a kid, like, who wouldn't want to play for Michael Jordan if you could? Now, why would you want to? Yeah, you know, it's him as an owner. It's it doesn't seem like in the beginning it seemed like he was a really too hands on. Now he's, he's kind of being stepped back and letting his uh, people do the work. But uh, actually, it's interesting. I'm just looking here. They uh, signed Tony Parker, which is interesting. Wow. Yeah, but he's, I mean, he what's can he bring some do? influence to that team. But he's not nothing that's going to like move that barometer. Uh, he's no, not even the best no, European uh, on that team. Maybe that's something Batum. in terms of player coach that can help out in the long run. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, Bismack is on that team as well, and they're going to have some defense down the middle. So you know what? If it's anything, they'll be uh, an exciting team to watch because they'll be fast, um, athletic, lots of blocks, dunks. So, but they won't compete with the better teams in the East. No, no, no. Yeah. So now, so now I've got my playoff teams. Uh, so I, I've got pegged at the eight seed with 40 wins, maybe 41. I don't know. Miami, another team that's treading water. Hassan Whiteside really just faltered last year so bad. He did. Uh, I think he can come back this year and uh, hopefully reclaim he that, uh, this defense and offense that he had the year prior. Um, now, like actually, this year he's going to have a little bit of help again with Dwayne Wade being there full time. Uh, not necessarily that he's going to be the player that he used to be, but he definitely will help this team. Uh, what else is there? You see, oh, <clears throat> Haslam is there, so you got another good forward who can uh, come in, score some points for you. James, well, James Johnson, I think personally that he needs to stay in his lane and not try to do too much. And when he tries to do too much is when he has problems. 
I think there's also tr deliberate, well, not deliberately, but I mean, they, they, they're looking at cap space. So it's a couple years away. Uh, I, I like watching uh, Drag uh, Goran Dragic. Uh, yeah, Dragic you know, is good. Yeah, Waiters, Olenek, Winslow. I mean, this is a good team, but it's not a special team. Yeah, Olenek is uh, very good too, especially in the, in the uh, small forward or power forward position. So yeah, I got I got Miami at eight at eight seed with forty wins. That might be a little low as I'm looking at this again, but even if it's a little low, it's not by much. Uh, who would you call before uh, ahead of them? If uh, in terms of uh, their team makeup, like would you be looking at a, a Milwaukee or a Minnesota? I mean Milwaukee with sorry not even Minnesota, but Milwaukee definitely is going to be a much better team this year. Oh yeah, definitely. I have them way ahead than this. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the next one that I got at number seven. Uh, I have uh, the Pistons with 42 wins, and it's it's sort of a two man team to me uh, with Drummond and Griffin. Griffin, I, I think now now he's got a full season. I, I think he was sort of so caught off guard on that trade, but he's got he's got a lot to prove. Yeah, it's a lot to prove for him. Uh, a coach definitely. with a lot to prove. Sorry, and a coach with a lot to prove within Casey. Coach of the year. Oh, definitely. And that's where actually I was going next. And, you know, a lot of people are looking at this team in terms of, uh, you know, offense. Uh, they're going to, this is going to be a team that's going to punish you on the inside. And I'm not just talking about offensively. I'm talking defensively. Right. I, I'm calling this, team, this is probably going to be, if not the, the third best defensive team in the East. Uh, I would have to, at least third to uh, fourth the defensive team in the East I have to put on this team because uh, Co uh, Coach Casey, that's what he's all about. They have the pieces to allow them to be that type of team. I, I only think Boston and Toronto have the better defensive team uh, besides them. I mean, I'm hoping or to see that uh, Philadelphia will become a better defensive team, but I don't think uh, any other team in the East can be as good as them in terms of defense. Mm -hmm. I think this is the one team, even though I've only got them at 42 wins, I wouldn't be shocked if somehow they squeezed out 50 in a week east. If Griffin and Drummond stay healthy, if Jackson uh, has a good year, they're not that deep, you know, which will hurt right. them, but I'm very I mean, they do deep. have a, a stretch uh, center, which is a Zaza. Yeah, I love Zaza. I mean, that, that changes a few things because you don't have many of those. Uh, real big centers who can actually shoot the ball uh, in the East. Uh, who else is there? Uh, I mean, I do love Drummond. That guy's a beast on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, defensively, I just uh, I'm looking at this team and they can they're going to pound you on the inside. You're going to have to be shooting from the outside. And well, how about what do you think of Calderon? I love I loved him as I'm, I'm is he still in the league? He still has, but he still has purpose. You know, Jose yeah. Calderon, uh, uh, that's actually my wife's favorite player, just so that she can do in her cute little accent, Ocho! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, like, I, Calderon, I mean, like, if, if you're a Raptors fan, uh, like, like we are, you just remember, like, what a, what a, just give it, you gave it, give everything he's got, great fundamental player, very few mistakes, uh, I, I don't know what he's, how many minutes he's going to play at this stage of his career, but he he's not something that that's that's a detriment if he's used correctly. Right, and I, I think you know where where he distributes the ball, passes the ball well, uh, doesn't play amazing defense, but uh, you know what he did for Cleveland uh, last year. Uh, it was phenomenal when he came on that floor, and I'm surprised they just didn't keep on going with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that was last year, and Cleveland's done for this year. Yeah, so up next, uh, so I got finishing sixth, um, and this might seem low for some people. I don't think mm -hmm. that highly of this team right now with, with some of the moves they made. Maybe it's because I'm very anti anti Dwight Howard. Uh, that's that's the Washington Wizards. I got them at 46 wins. It's the same team that, and I think you actually went down on, like with the overall big man p putting uh, Howard in over Gortat, uh, and it's so yeah. weird to say because Dwight Howard is going to go in the Hall of Fame, should go in the Hall of Fame, but over over the last six years, I mean, Kobe said get this guy out of here, Harden said get this guy out of here, didn't do anything to make Charlotte better, 
Uh, no. he, he was in Atlanta, finished third in rebounding, and or not, you know, it was third in rebounding last year. I think he, he's a, he's a dinosaur. He is a dinosaur. Um, I don't think any team has used him correctly lately, and, and I think that's the biggest problem. He is not the offensive guy that he used to be. He needs to be a rim protector. Get grab those rebounds. Pass that ball. He can't be a primary scorer, and that's what he still thinks he is, but he can't be that. Uh, I would like to see this year with that team, uh, Beal uh, and uh, Wall, see how they get along. Because last year there was that big tension with, uh, mm-hmm. with Wall when he was off and that run that they went on. So, I mean, there's a lot of uh, things with this team that uh, have to go right in order for them to do anything. But uh, I honestly thought that they were going to tear this team apart over the summer and uh, try to get someone else in here. It, it's going to happen. Uh, I think this is more Beal's team than Wall. I always thought that John Wall, exciting player, slightly overrated in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Although, he, did you see that yeah. one picture he took for that press shot that it looked like he was definitely on like 10 pounds of dope? No, I didn't see that one. <laughs> I'll, 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 send it to you, uh, I'll send it to you after and actually made me love John Wall because that was just, I thought the most awesome picture I've ever seen of an NBA player that wasn't, uh, that wasn't during the all-star game where they just put on their best clothes or something, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> that, that, yeah. They're always dressed well. Uh, how much, uh, do you know how long does he have left on his contract? Or is he on his last year? Or No, the max contract is coming. So they're pretty much all in on John Wall. So, and I'm just not sure that, I think he's already hit his ceiling. Uh, Beal's my Beal's my guy on that team, to me. He was, and you know what? I think on the right team, he still can excel and become a better player. Uh, I just don't think that uh, him and Beal are pretty much, you know, in terms of the type of players that they are, they are almost similar players. They shoot the ball, uh, they drive the ball. They're, you know, they're sh- more on the shoot first. Uh, type players, uh, so that's why I mean they do well together, but I just don't think they have the right mix. They they need to be with different guys who pass first, right? Yeah, I, I, and uh, Austin Rivers is on that team now, which I I just uh, saw. That's not bad. So it's it's uh it should be interesting to see what this team's able to do this year. Anybody on that team sticks out to you that may you know uh, do better this year more than you expected? More than I expect. No, there, there's really not. I mean, I, I, I think it's it's really. I really want to see Beal take over as the leader and see what he can do as with with this as as his team. He's my guy to sort of watch, but I think they've already hit their ceiling a couple years ago, and you know it, it's sort of sad. I mean, like it's a good team, but they're not gonna get any better. No, uh, they're this team. They're in the East. They have no chance in the East with this team. And and if they do, for some crazy reason, I, I, I only see them winning, getting into playoffs and knocked out the first round. I don't see them going past the first round this year again. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. fifth, I've got the Pacers. Uh, Oladipo has become the player that a lot of people thought he could. Uh, I'm really curious to see uh, what Tyreek Evans, how he's going to fit in. But my favorite player to watch on that team, not necessarily my favorite player, period, because... Well, of course, he's still very young. It's Miles Turner. Miles Turner, yes, definitely a good player. Owen Depot is going to be amazing on that team this year. I honestly think this is the team that no one's really talking about as much. And with Miles Turner, Owen Depot, uh, and the the defense that they can offer, and especially uh, the off the offense that they can do, uh, I think they're going to be a sleeper in the East. They're going to surprise a few people, uh, and. I'm just going to say Philadelphia does not want to play this team no. <laughs> in the playoffs. No. Uh, this is the team you want to stay away from in the playoffs because uh, this is the team that can uh, catch you when you're napping because they don't have the big name outside of Home Depot, uh, and but they have the pieces and the defense and the offense to uh, to catch you while you're napping and beat you mm-hmm. in a seven-game or five-game series. Yeah, they very, they very well could. I don't know if they're going to sneak up on people like they, they did last year, but... Indiana is very, very good. It's very exciting for the a very good basketball town of Indianapolis. Oh, always, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, here, now we're at the top four. Oh, I have Indiana at forty-seven wins. Uh, I got Milwaukee at fourth uh, with forty-nine wins. 
obviously there's been coaching turmoil. This is going to be their four, fourth coach in five years. And everything begins and ends with, with Giannis Antetokounmpo. Antetokounmpo. I can, it's hard, yes. such a hard name to say. Yes, it, it, it does. Uh, I'm still thinking that, looking at this roster, that they are missing that second star player, which every team needs. Uh, you know, they, you need at least two star players to to make it as far as you need to go. And uh, this team, they have, although they have good players, on this team, but they don't have anybody who sticks out to be, you know, that other guy you have to cover, that other guy you have yeah, to Yeah, the only one there I'm sort of looking at, I mean, Bledsoe's good, uh, Middleton's good. Bledsoe's good, yeah. Lopez, I mean, as the other Lopez, I mean, he's obviously on the down part of his career. I, I think sort of the key player here is Brogdon. If he can progress, I don't know that he can progress to be an all-star. I mean, obviously, that's sort of going to have to happen. But uh, when a lot of people talk about Giannis right now, it's all about, like, well, it, he's not going to stay in Milwaukee. And I always sort of think, well, well, why not? Like, what is it about his character? And I don't know much about his, other than watching him play, of course, you don't hear much about what Giannis thinks. You don't hear him complain. You don't hear him get excited. You don't hear much about him at, on anything. So No, I, you don't. And I, I might, it could be that he's Greek and he doesn't speak very good English. But uh, uh, honestly, with this team, they are... You know, one superstar player away from really being a good, good team or a contender in the East. And uh, this would be this is one of the teams that I thought when I heard the Jimmy Butler situation, I thought this is one of the teams that could definitely use him. And, and if they did, they would uh, become a force in the East. It, it's so Butler. That, that's when we get to the West. Like uh, that's obviously one of the teams I can't, for the life of me, project. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think Milwaukee—they're very, very good. Uh, they've got some playoff experience. They could be a sleeper team to get to the conference finals. Everything has yeah, to go definitely. their way, but it could happen. Um, I, it could happen. I very much doubt it. Uh, a lot, like a lot of things would have to go their way. I know I'm uh, sounding like I'm really down on Philadelphia, but it'll be a blessing if they play Philadelphia in the uh, second round. You're talking like a uh, Raptors fan is what you're doing. Sorry? You're talking like a Raptors fan. <laughs> I am, I am, but it's 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 true though. I mean, they can't I don't see them beating Boston in a seven game series. That, they can't beat Toronto. That's why we had that you know, so, we both said And uh, Philadelphia is the only team I can see just because, and it's not necessarily because of the talent. I think it's the lack thereof of experience. Mm-hmm. So what uh, they can actually pull on, which uh, Philadelphia can't. All right. I know you're driving later, but I'm not. So I got to crack open a beer while I'm talking about that. So I hope everyone listening <laughs> is doing the same. Yeah. I got to go pick up the kids. Yeah. Actually, ironically enough, uh, I was in the mood for shit beer. So what did I just open up old Milwaukee? Which makes it's a oh beer, sweet a beer, a beer so bad it makes me wonder what older Milwaukee is. But um bump. But sometimes I like my shit beer. What can I tell you? All right, so this now it's going to get really interesting. I get the Raptors at third, fifty four wins, uh, only because I think it's going to take them a while to figure out who they are. Uh, obviously, all eyes, all eyes in the NBA are pretty much on Kawhi Leonard. How will he adapt to the way he left San Antonio? And we still don't know the exact truth of everything. Clearly, he didn't want to be there at the end. It was right. an ugly um, departure. But if Kawhi give if Kawhi is what Kawhi can be, and let's optimistically let's hope that he is. Mm-hmm. This was a step up over DeRozan, and I love DeRozan. I mean, how can you not love a player? who is an all-star who wants to be in a city that's not typically where a star basketball player wants to be. It's not like it's the Maple Leafs in hockey. Every Canadian right, kid no, wants, not. Yeah, every Canadian kid um, wants to be a Leaf. Every, of course, I'm going to say a little kid. bite to yeah. the Raptors. Yeah. So, I am a Raptor fan. But uh, I think the biggest thing for the Raptors, outside of Kawhi coming to the team, is Danny Green. Uh, mm. His defense... Uh, and his uh, ability to hit the three on a consistent basis. Uh, he's not a guy you have to feed the ball or he has to have the ball in order to do his job. I, I think that is going to be really make a big difference. Um, I mean, another person that I'm really looking forward to seeing this year, and hopefully he can come back into the mix, is Norman Powell. And it, it's, 
it's nice when you can talk about the the fringe guys and these are the guys who can actually make a big difference in the the long run. Uh, just because this Raptor team, their top, you know, their starting uh, five is gonna is gonna be almost as good as anybody in the East, and I think where the driving difference is gonna be on from anyone in the East is gonna be off the bench and the consistency that we can do with that, and that's what made the Raptors the team they were last year, uh, and I think that's what hopefully is gonna make the difference in the playoffs this year. The key player I'm watching this year is to see how he progresses, and I think he will do very well. Uh, OG. Mm -hmm. Yeah, OG. Definitely with OG. Uh, I'd love to see his uh, three-point shoot uh, shot come into play this year. Uh, he was fairly consistent last year. I just need him to bring that number up a little bit for us to be really good, uh, for him to be really good uh, and uh, make a big difference. Siakam. Definitely one of the players you have to look out for. I know he's on the list of uh, one of the players uh, best or most improved for the year. Mm -hmm. So the, that's uh, definitely somebody you have to look out for. Yeah, so I'm very excited. Uh, I, we actually had our conversation before this because I'm more nervous uh, th th than you are w with this only because I worry that Leonard won't want to stay. If he stays, um, and, but we'll see. Uh, I, I'm it's, scared. it's a gamble you got to take, and, and in my eyes, it's actually not a gamble because this team is rebuilding in two years, anyways. Let's be all honest, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the Rosen is, was not going to be here in two years; his contract was going to be up. Same thing with Lowry. Uh, so we were pretty much going to head into a rebuild. The only thing this does is you, we had an opportunity to get an ace in the hole, uh, and it's not almost uh, not a guarantee because you have to play the games. But you arguably got the second or second bet, second or third best player in the NBA, uh, and arguably the best two-way player in the NBA. And why can you not take that? You cannot afford not to take that chance. And I think the Raptors made the right choice in that regard. It's an it's a better all-in than when we were talking about what Brooklyn did. Yeah, yeah. and now let's take all these and players in forty. <laughs> yeah, we haven't mentioned. And I know the talks in terms of Butler has turned away from uh, certain teams in the East, and Toronto's was slightly mentioned in that. But I usually think when it's really quiet, it's when something's really happening. Uh, can you see that trade happening with the Raptors? Who would they give up? Uh, you know what? It's hard to say, but it, you would have to definitely give up. Uh, it would have to be at least an OG mm -hmm. for for sure. Would be one of the players that you're giving up there. Uh, probably uh, Serge uh, and maybe a couple of draft picks. I mean, that would probably be the best you're getting for an expired contract, mm -hmm. uh, expiring contract at this point. So I have them at 54 wins. 54. Um, you know what? Um, I, I haven't really thought about the number, but I, I had them in the in the mid fifties for sure. Uh, I had them lower than they did last year. Uh, if they went higher, that definitely surprised me. Uh, that mean that they've gelled quite a bit. Uh, but definitely, you know, about the Raptors this year. It again, it's not about the season. The season is all about getting to know each other. Uh, and this for this team, it is about the playoffs, and that's mm -hmm. the only thing that counts here. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, yeah. again, you have a coach of the year who was – that's also why I think, like, you don't give the coach of the year or vote for that until the playoffs are done because that should matter. And that's in all sports. Right. And that's an – Yeah, I, I, it's it's hard to say. I, I love Coach uh, Casey and what he was as, uh, in terms of the, the coach of this team. Uh, but I saw some glaring mistakes last year in the playoffs that I, I just – didn't understand and some of the uh, defensive things that they were running and how the players were on top of, uh, you know, they weren't on top of uh, LeBron. Uh, it, it just clearing mistakes. And I think it's like, it's not the ability to, you know, play defense. It's the ability to coach defense and wanting to play defense. Mm -hmm. You know, every, not every player can shoot the three, but I'm in my mind, every player can play some type of defense. Okay. Well, so we'll continue. I got uh, at number two, uh, Philadelphia, 55 wins. Uh, if I were yeah. completely objective and had no favorite team, this was the t would be the team I would I would watch nonstop on League Pass, which I do have. Uh, so 
I just love watching all. I love Embiid. Simmons is becoming the guy that we thought he would. Embiid's a beast. They've got a good defender in Covington. I love Saric. I, I think I keep. I must be really in love with European players with the last initials of C. Uh, <laughs> my wild card here is Markel Fultz. His rookie season, obviously, was plagued by injuries, but even when he did play, wasn't very good. No, and I think he was just getting warmed up that uh, last year. I think this year you should see a big difference in his play. Um, Dragic definitely, uh, you know, the ability to shoot the three, pull the guys out from the, into the middle. Uh, JJ Redick, and not many people mention this guy. I, I think he's the heart and soul of this team. Well, yeah, uh, I think yeah. he's that little fight. You know, the the little the dog in the corner he looks really small, but he bites, comes out and bites you, and you're like, holy, you can't believe, holy crap, this kid has a bite on him. Uh, I think he is the heart and soul of this team right now. Um, they're all young, and they need some leadership, and I think that's what he really gives them. Yeah, I don't see Philadelphia even... I think they're still a year away from representing the East, because they still need some more uh, seasoning, some playoff heart. But yeah, I'm glad you brought up Reddick because let's say if Fultz still struggles, that's your backup, is, Re- is J.J. Right. Reddick. And I, I think they're going with Reddick right now. I, I think Fultz, he still has to work his way in. And, you know, obviously the talent's there, but that that's the funny thing about all, well, all sports, for that matter. There are busts. There are surprises. You just don't know what's going to happen. There's so few sure things. And when we get to talk in the West, there's one, one player I'll talk about who was pegged as a sure thing. And, oh, my God, uh, he's really got to turn it around. But we'll, we'll get there. So... Fultz is like uh, my eyes are like glued to him to see if he can. He's just got to make some kind of step. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to be a star right now, but he's got. He can't be what he was last year. He just looked lost. No, definitely. Uh, and I, I think he's going to learn a lot from Reddick, and I think that's going to make a difference in his gameplay. Um, I'm looking at this team in terms of what they are. Uh, you're right. They are at least a year away. Maybe another. Uh, veteran away from uh, becoming a really dangerous team mm-hmm. in the East. Uh, yeah. uh, hashtag trust the process. So uh, definitely. Uh, obviously, I've, I've got Boston uh, winning the East. Well, actually, I have Boston winning the East period and leading in wins. I've got them at 60 wins. And mm-hmm. I'll, I'll actually say that probably one of the best things that ever happened to them is actually Hayward's injury. It forced um, guys to I, step up. I would up. say yes. Yeah. But, jeez. Man, it's one of those things. It's, and you think the it's like with the Raptors, uh, you have your best player, you have your second best player, and you have arguably two or three players who couldn't be considered your third. Um, but with this team, there's not enough ball. Uh, too many people want to hold the ball. Uh, and I think that's going to be a disruption for that team. Could be. It could be. Because yeah. uh, what I'm looking at is you have Tatum and Brown, Two players that played prop that got a lot more minutes than they probably would have. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kyrie got hurt, so uh, Ky- so like that sort of led Boston to sort of limp into the tail end of that of those playoffs. But that team's loaded. They also have a great player in Al Horford who you don't even talk about. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I know uh, just from reading earlier, Al Horford is a game time uh, decision for tomorrow with a risk injury. So. You know, as I was telling one of my friends the other day, uh, I guess Boston's really good until an injury happens. And I think that's with any team in the NBA, but uh, for some reason, these players seem to be really prone to it. So uh, I have Boston winning the East outright. Uh, any debate? In the playoffs? Uh, yeah. yeah, winning the most games and, ta- and taking the East. Uh, I okay. Obviously, I don't want that to happen. Sorry, fans of the Celtics, but that's... Trying to be as objective as possible. That's what I've got. What uh, you, you know what? I'm gonna have to be the home to- the hometown boy, and you know uh, the Raptors have done uh, which we which we hope they would have done in the beginning. And I'm thinking it's not over in terms of what they're gonna add to this team. Mm-hmm. So uh, I am gonna agree with you with Boston finishing first overall in the East. But I'm going to say Toronto, Boston, Eastern Finals, and then Toronto in the NBA Finals. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I won't bet a beer because I can't bet against Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, can't do it. 
<laughs> All right, but uh, I, I, I certainly hope you're right. But uh, in terms right. of, uh, of that order, like nothing sort of stood out uh, like where you think that might be wrong? Um, I mean, the bottom teams, uh, honestly, you know, take your pick. Uh, you know, throw, them, uh, throw the dice out and see where they land yeah. or throw the darts at them and see where they land. Those bottom teams, it's just going to be who's injured, who's not injured. Uh, and let's just really say a lot of these teams are at the bottom. We're hoping we're not in the place. We're hoping to uh, land a top 10 pick for next year. Mm -hmm. So I don't see anything much movement there. I, I think the, the biggest obstacle again for this year, for especially for uh, these uh, – uh, for these playoff teams that uh, all of them, uh, especially the top four, it's really they're all about just getting through the season and get to the playoffs without injury. Right. And uh, whoever comes in with the least amount of injuries is going to be the one who's going to win. Okay. So let's uh, move on to the West. Uh, oh, God, this team has been so bad so long. 12 years without a playoff experience. Uh, without a playoff experience. Nice, Kirk. Uh, 12 years without a playoff appearance. And it's going to be 13. Finishing dead last in the West, I've got the Sacramento Kings. I'm projecting them at 27 wins. Are they even still in the NBA? <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes. Uh, hold on. I think I have some of the players on my list. Uh, to truly tell you, to tell you the truth, if you asked me before today, uh, if I knew who was on that team, I would probably say no. Uh, and there's only really one player I know fairly well, which would be uh, Zach Randolph. Uh, but outside of that, I don't know what's going on with this team. How, why did he even go there? Or was he traded there? <laughs> uh, you know what? I don't remember. Uh, well, I think at that point, I mean, in his career, I mean, like, well, it's, it's Zebo. You got to love Zebo. I mean, like, possibly the uh, best nickname in sports. I think this guy could have been, could, he's going to be trade bait for this year for this team. Uh, he'll be on a contender before it's all said and done, I think, before the end of this year. Well, before this, I was reading an article. Because, mm -hmm. uh, like, they've been lottery picks for the last little while. So these are some of the players they've picked in the last uh, five years. So Thomas Robinson, Ben McLemore, Willie Cauley-Stein, who's still there. He still could do something. Nick Stauskas, a good Canadian boy, but just Canadian. Why did he trade him good. away? He's a good player. Nah. He's not a great player. He's not For a lottery pick, he's not that special. No, but I, I think for a team like this, you cannot afford to uh, trade away someone with some potential. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, here's who else they had. Uh, Georges Papagianis. I, I, for, for a second there, I was adding a flashback of, remember the show Webster? I thought it was George Papadopoulos. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, God, we're really dating ourselves here. Uh, Jimmer Fredette, who, like a gimmick player. And, but these are the people, so, so those are their lottery picks. These are the people they could have had instead. Uh, the Greek Freak, CJ McCollum, Damian Leonard, Lillard, Clay Thompson, Miles Turner, Devin Booker. Playoff team. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, Playoff team, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I would not put them that high in the uh, in the West, but they are a playoff team for sure. If, if all that together, yeah. So I got yeah. them at twenty seven wins. The only pe the only thing I'm really sort of gonna pay attention to uh, their first. I think you're pushing it with twenty seven with that strong West. I might be. I might be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what? You're probably right. Uh, I'll throw it at twenty four. The, the only thing I'm sort of looking at is okay. They pick. They had the number two draft pick. So is this going to be another lottery pick that that's a bust and Marvin Bagley the third? But I mean, either way, you've got a bunch of players that have never won anything at the pro level. Uh, Aaron Fox is a nice player to watch. He's fun. Buddy Hyald, I kind of like. But who are these guys? I don't like. like I said before when we just started. I, I, I like outside of uh, you know Zach Randolph. Uh, I don't think I've. Uh, I didn't even think I've seen this team play last year. I, I kind of avoided them like the plague. <laughs> yeah, well, much like players do. Much yeah, like, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious, yeah, like, like DeMarcus Cousins did. Uh, so, yeah, I've got them finishing dead last. Uh, unlike the Phoenix Suns, who did finish dead last in the West. So, again, what a great game I got to see, Suns-Kings last year, huh? But, <laughs> that, hey, but you know yeah, what, though? You know what, Andrew? It was, uh, so, it was the, so cheap. 
uh, Pauline and I, we were like a 10th row center under a hundred bucks. Wow. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they almost would have to pay me to go see that game. <laughs> I was in Phoenix. It was fun. I drank a lot. Big surprise. <laughs> okay. So that helps. You can't remember the game. <laughs> I remember the first half and the third quarter and the fourth quarter got a little blurry. Much like when we went to a Jays game, like I by the seventh, eighth inning, like uh, you know, big shock. <laughs> the real stretch in the seventh inning to grab the last beer. Well, it is right. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so I got the Suns finishing ahead of the Kings, uh, twenty-eight wins, Definitely, yeah. and, and it's all about the first overall pick, DeAndre Ayton. Is he Definitely, good? Definitely, uh, he should make a difference on this team. Uh, Trevor Reese is on that team, which is going to oh, allow for guy. them uh, to get some uh, uh, some uh, veteran help and uh, definitely leadership. You still get Tyson Chandler. I think he's a really good uh, guy down the middle who can add some defense. Uh, you know what? Uh, I definitely see this team being possibly a little bit better than you think. Uh, I'm Could liking be. the young guys on this team. And again, it's the it's similar to some of the other teams I was looking at. Lots of potential, just waiting for the uh, for the right person to step up or come in and uh, make this team a winner. Yeah, and Devin Booker did twenty four points per game last year. Did anyone even notice that? I didn't notice. Uh, I didn't it, know he was that high. I had to look that up. Yeah, but you know what? He's a he's a good player. He's young. He's a guard. But the the issue is, is anybody can score twenty you know twenty six points on a bad team. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know, you can do that by mistake. What was the shooting percentage, right? Uh, but definitely the with Trevor Reese now on that team helping out definitely will uh, allow for him to get some more help down the, uh, in the Ford spot. Uh, Challen was there last year, I think. Uh, outside of that, I'm just you know I'm just looking for something to cheer for for this team because they are a likable team. Uh, I've always liked Phoenix from back in the day and of course you know uh <clears throat> when you had uh, our canadian boy there uh, <laughs> steve nash yes steve nash uh you know shooting it up so i, I think they're doing it the right way they did they blew it up they're building back they have some good pieces um definitely not a playoff team uh but a team to watch they should be fun mm-hmm. so maybe they'll do better than who i have at 13th uh i got memphis with 30 wins They've got to be better than they were last year, providing that Mike Conley's playing a full season and Marc Gasol doesn't have a, like a little uh, bitch fit again like he did last year. Ah, Memphis. It's kind of like they get lost in the mix, this team. Even when they were good, uh, they get lost. Sorry? Even when they were good, they get lost. They're a boring team. Um, they didn't have, you know, the that... You know, that player out there just kind of came out and played defense and uh, inside out the ball. But uh, you're right. Gasol is going to be hopefully a better year. Um, I'm just trying to see here who else. Who did they pick up in the draft this year? Uh, Jaron Jackson. Jaron Jackson. So, so he's like a, he was the fourth fourth pick. Uh, so, you know, he's going to see some time. So possibly another uh, rookie of the year candidate. It's Yeah, I and mean, he's the... Uh, uh, should be interesting here because this is, again, this team has some good pieces. Uh, their best pieces right now are older guys, mm-hmm. so uh, hopefully they're not going to not going to see much of decline. Maybe just uh, status quo. But it's all about the young players now coming in to see if they can pick up the slack and uh, make them a good team. I definitely don't see this a play. Don't see them a playoff no. team again. I got them thirty. Um, uh, I can honestly see the Suns possibly overtaking them for uh, uh, in their position in terms of uh, a better team. Good. All right, so uh, moving on, uh, another team I'm – I should be interested just to watch uh, this player, uh, but I'm not. Uh, Dallas Mavericks, I got 34 wins. And again, continuing with my theme of, hey, it's a European with the last, last initial C, Luka Doncic. <laughs> uh, like, is this – like, this is the guy they're hoping will be the next Nowitz, uh, Nowitzki and – whether he is or isn't, but, uh, but he, he does bring already some grit from you know playing uh, playing well in Europe. But what I like about this team is DeAndre Jordan, a star who wants to be in Dallas. Uh, yes. Uh, how much of a star? 
Um, I think he is uh, he is a good player. Defense, uh, you know, pulling the ball off the boards, for rebounds, offensive, defensive. Uh, not much of a scorer. Uh, he is going to have to play off the ball. Someone's going to have to feed him. Uh, with this team, yeah, someone's got to score. And there's not a there's not that elite guy. Uh, I do, yeah, yeah, and the Vinci, he's getting too old. He's not going to be that. He's going to give you that twenty point night every now and then. I don't, I don't think. Believe well, he can he's do not it every even night starting again. the season. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, he's hurt right now. So, but I mean, yeah. like they were asking a lot from from Nowitzki, and really, if, uh, again, this maybe this is just sort of like maybe as a fan, I kind of want him to announce his impending retirement and just give him a nice little farewell tour because he was a really really good player, changed the perception of the European player, did win a title. Definitely. You know, like uh, and he he should get his due and. And, you know, maybe because he's sort of a geeky-looking German guy, as speaking as a somewhat geeky-looking shorter German guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you're going to say, hey, you know what, let's put Dirk in this commercial. <laughs> you know, and the thing is with uh, this team here, they're not going to do anything this year. And I know Dirk wants to retire, you know, from this team. And he did win a championship there. And I don't know if he has a des- any desire of playing anywhere else. But I think it's really important with this team that they – don't let him just retire just like that. You and I, I, it's almost like the Matt Sandin type situation. Uh, you don't really want to trade him, but you have to trade him. You have to get something for him. And you know, getting some young picks, or some picks, or some a couple of young players for Dirk would be huge for this team, especially going forward. And they're talking about tanking, which uh, last year. Uh, but they they have to do that, and, and not doing it, it would be the biggest mistake for this team. If you didn't know that we were Canadian, that's, I think, our third hockey reference. <laughs> yeah, I think it is the third. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Definitely. Yeah, so I got up next. Uh, end of an era. Lob City's over. Los Angeles Clippers. 37 wins. And, all right, I really want your take on this, Andrew. I mean, like, Lob City was exciting. It was fun. What did it ever do? They never. I know the West is loaded, but they never made the conference finals. No, they didn't. And and of course, they're they're listen. They're playing against their big brother. Uh, and what always happens? You get slapped around, and they're hoping and praying and putting all their ducks in their row to hopefully that Kali comes there, uh, and then also. They're gauging for a Butler situation as well. So this is a team right now, don't expect to see anything or hear anything from. You may get, uh, you know, you may you may get a surprise out of some of the young players there, but there's nothing much coming out. But this is a team gearing up right now for next year and retooling with all-star players. What do you think? Oh, I, I I agree. Uh, I mean, the, the only the, their biggest player right now in terms of star quality, and he's not really a star. He's just he, he's a great complimentary player, and that's Mart, Martin Gortat. Uh, I mean, Lou yep. Williams, sure. I mean, he's a six. He's always going to be the, like I don't know why he's always coming off the bench. Uh, he and, could definitely and, start. And, you know, I I, I I I love him as a player. And again, uh, this is a team who's in this situation where yes, you need something to look at while they're playing. But that's a player who needs to be traded by the, again by the trade deadline this year. You cannot not uh, get something for him. He's not. He's going to be a helpful player, but I don't think he's going to be helpful if they end up picking up someone like a Leonard uh, and a Butler next year. You're going to need more pieces, and yeah. he's not going to get everything that you need. You have to get more of a, a collective of pieces to get something good. I have him at 37 wins, and I think only because I have mad respect for Doc Rivers. Right. Uh, almost, which is where I'm going here next. Like, uh, again, I, I think I said, like, the West is going to, like, I can't figure some of these teams out. Uh, so here's the first team that I could be off by 10 wins. Uh, I got San Antonio Spurs next, not a playoff team, 43 wins. And it's, De- so we have DeMar, DeRozan, Aldridge, and Pau Gasol. And Pau is, he's aging, but he's still very effective. But mm-hmm. this is a true end of an era. Like I think I, I said, uh, Lob City's over. This is a much bigger era. Now Manu's retired. Parker's gone. Uh, gone. With this team, they are borderline. Um, 
but I think you're going to see a surprise this year. And mm. is it me being a DeRozan fan? <laughs> I guess it is. Uh, I think he's he's a, he's going to be a surprise for uh, most of the people out there listening to this because uh, I think his uh, passing numbers is going to go up in terms of his assist. I think his uh, three point shooting is going to come up a fit, uh, is going to is going to be better. Uh, I will not be surprised to see even his uh, points per game to go up. Uh, I, I think this team they're just starting to re, they're starting to slowly retool, uh, and there are a lot of players on this team who are on the older side. But believe me when I say I will not be surprised to see this team in the playoffs, maybe in the eighth spot. I won't put them past there, but Pop has done miracles before. Interesting, interesting. I almost want to make a wager on this one here. Uh, I'm willing to make a wager on this. All one. right, so you know what? I'll t- I'll take that because I feel like I, I I gave you the field with that whole Chicago finishing last that that sort of worked mm-hmm. in my favor. Uh, I'm all right. So beer bet, so you got San Antonio in the playoffs. I have them on the fringe of it. Right. So I'll say okay. So if the Spurs make the playoffs, you you've got a beer. All right. Okay. It's a bet. All right. Nice. So uh, continuing on. Uh, another team that it's so hard to figure out, but I want them to do well, uh, because I always have a soft spot for the city of New Orleans. I got the Pelicans at 44 wins. Uh, obviously everything begins, ends with, uh, Anthony Davis, the brow, uh, the only person who can pull off that look, because I know I sure as hell couldn't. What can't he do? He can score, he can rebound, he can block. Uh, losing, they lost Rondo, which in a clutch game means something. He didn't really do much with Cousins because of injuries and whatnot, but they got Nikola Muratic, yeah, continuing, European, letter C. I love Drew Holiday. Yes, Drew Holiday is one of my favorites out there. He's a really good player. Um, I think this team has all the right components to make them a good team, except for one thing with me. Uh, and uh, I think losing, um, what's this, oh, geez, I'm losing my mind now. Uh, I'm losing my mind. Who did they lose? Uh, they, they uh, well, Cousins and Rondo. Are the yeah, well, I think losing Cousins, and that was on the tip of my tongue, I apologize. Um, yeah, losing Cousins, when, uh, there was a point last year where those two were forced to be reckoned with. And I thought they were, with Holiday, they were going to really, you know, break down the door. And then, of course, the uh, injury happened. With those two, I don't think there was any other team uh, in the West that can put three guys with that type of quality, size, and ability on the floor. Uh, they just outclassed every team in terms of the size, the ability to shoot the ball, uh, play defense. I just, I just thought this team was going to be a huge jump this year, but now that uh, he's gone, I, I think they're just going to stay status quo. Uh, I, I believe they're going to be in the playoffs. Uh, I think that they're going to be a fight to make it into the playoffs this year, um, unless they are able to make a move and get that uh, another guy in there. I really want to see how Julius Randle sort of. Uh does here uh julius randall um do i mean julius randall uh i'm not a big fan uh no, he's yeah. a good a good player but uh I, I don't see him making that much of a difference interesting okay all right so i got them at 44 wins uh sort of fringe of the playoffs uh mm-hmm. again it, they could easily do better depending on like the perfect storm and I go now next to the hardest one to figure out is, and we've already touched on it, the Minnesota Timberwolves, because we don't know what Jimmy, whether Jimmy Butler is even going to, how many games is he going to play for the Timberwolves this year? I, I mean, quite honestly, can the Timberwolves honestly afford to keep him at this point? Because let, let's, let's be serious here. He's on a one-year contract. The contract's over at the end of this year. Uh, every minute that ticks away, they lose. Um, possibly uh, a draft pick or a quality of player that they're going to get back. Because, you know, who's going to want to give, like, who's going to honestly want to give up anything for Butler, especially at the teams that they're talking about, uh, when they can just wait until next year? Because 
let's be honest, none of these teams, they're all fringe teams. They're not going to make the NBA playoffs, so they're not going to give anything worthwhile. So it's kind of like, we'll wait until next year, and we'll take our chances on free agency. What do you think? Well, I'll say, I'll say this about Butler. I love the fact that he's showing a massive set of balls right now. Oh, huge. Yeah, and so like, like there's a lot more eyes on him than ever before on a team that probably wouldn't have that many eyes. Like, it, are you what, Are you this elite player that you are essentially are positioning yourself as? You could be. And, and apparently a lot of his frustration is he's just figuring that a lot of other players aren't playing to the level that he thinks they can, which sort of t- touches to like a big disappointment. I was mentioning earlier, a fellow Canadian boy and Andrew Wiggins. Um, uh, you know, and I, I agree to that. They, they all need to be better. Uh, but I also honestly think that this team, when he got there was a couple of years away from being that team. Mm-hmm. And, and then, you know, it, it's, and Wiggins, yes, he is a good player, but his numbers completely fell off the fell off the the board when uh, Butler came to the team. I mean, he went from like uh, moving up in points every year to dropping back down to I think eighteen or nineteen points a game, like where he was twenty five before that. Yeah, so it, it's definitely hurt him. And, and, and it's, uh, it's not just, I think it's, it's time for the young kids to become the leaders of this team. Yeah, and they they honestly need to get the best they can for Butler because he is only disrupting that team right now, and it's not making anything good. And yes, I'm biased in terms of I would love to see him on the Raptors, but honestly, who else other than the Raptors, maybe the Lakers, who's not ready to win this year, can give them what they want? It, it, it'll be hard. Uh, actually, going back to Wiggins, it's not just. It's it's one thing if you go down in points per game and, and boards per game if if they're if you're sharing the ball that's perfectly fine because it's all about the greater good but his shooting percentage also tump, like plummeted so he's yeah. not as efficient and uh, just to sort of put that into perspective to the non Canadians who are listening to this uh, and Andrew I'm, I'm sure you probably noticed that too so like when Andrew was playing Andrew <laughs> yeah, well, yeah so, thanks yeah yeah see uh, when Wiggins was playing in uh, in college for Kansas, that would actually like TSN actually started showing all those games. Like definitely, all, yeah, to the point where it's like, okay, this is going to be like the next big star, and that's how it was presented to us as Canadians. Like he was, he, and he is the next big thing, and that hasn't happened. He's a, he's he is not the next big thing right now. No. And, you know, could it be age? Could it be that he's only going to be the number two, possibly the number three guy in any team? You know, is he uh, Pippen? You know what I mean? Like, is he just needs to be that guy who comes in and scores his uh, 15 to 20 points and pulls down his rebounds and gets his uh, four to five assists? Maybe he's that guy. But the way that the, currently the team is going, it doesn't seem like he's having an opportunity with all this uh, – Hoopla, especially with Butler, it's like it needs to be quiet for this team. You almost need to yeah. not really pay attention to them, and they need to just play. And right now, I don't think uh, with this crazy thing going on with Butler that they have a chance. Uh, like the, you know, the fact that Butler went and grabbed four bench players who probably might not even be pay- half of them might not be, be playing in the NBA this year, more on the B League team, and went out and beat his team. I mean, is that humiliating or what? Oh, huge! But I still, right, so. I still have them forty-five wins. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go out on the limb. They're going to the playoffs. I, I can agree with that. I think they're gonna again be not fight, but they'll be on fr- on the fringe for the playoffs. I see them making it. Uh, I just see if it continues the way it is with Butler being the way it is that it, this team uh, is not going to get better. Uh, and uh, they just need to, you know, cut out the cancer and move on. Mm. It'll be interesting. That that's def- that's the biggest story right now, I think, in the NBA. Going oh yeah, definitely. Month. Yeah. And did he really sleep with his girlfriend? <laughs> okay, I I don't even know the story. What? Okay, so apparently, uh, Butler uh, slept with, and I'm just trying to remember. 
who's the guy who just signed for them? Uh, Minnesota. There we go. Okay, so apparently Butler slept with uh, someone's ex-girlfriend. Uh, it's it's this hearsay. Uh, it's not uh, necessarily true. Uh, it's, I believe it's uh, Towns. Is it his ex-girlfriend that uh, possibly that he slept with? And uh, that's where there's some uh, kind of pull uh, between them, or they're not getting along very well. Now, if it's true or not, does it really matter? It's like an ex-girlfriend, but uh, you know, uh, you know how things go when it comes to women <laughs> and guys. Uh, wow. I know. I I didn't know any of that. Uh, that would explain a lot. Although I. My favorite all-time story with that is when, what was it, Mo Williams, not, not Mo Williams, who was the Cleveland Cavalier who allegedly slept with uh, LeBron's mom? Wow, I didn't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't remember, the, I think he's like well out of the league at this point, but I know there was another story, like a going. here's a fourth hockey reference, uh, where there was all this dissension in the Leafs camp because, what was it, uh... Corson slept with uh, McGillney's wife or something like that. I think I heard about that too. Wow, that was way back when. Yeah, well, you know, again, we, well, we're going to age ourselves again. Why the hell not? Yeah, but yeah, you know, Anthony Towns, he is a a great young player. <laughs> and that's what he is, he's young. And, uh, and I think doing something like that, if Butler did it, uh, I think it would really, it's going to really cause a lot of crap if it's true. Oh, uh, I, I, I like just I checked said, that out. It's Delonte West. Cancer out. Delonte West. Who slept Sorry? With, Say that again? Delonte West uh, slept with LeBron's mom. <laughs> so. Uh, how did that go over? Well, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> What's worse, if, if you're the mom who's sort of doing that, or remember all the, the drama with Vince Carter's well, I mean, mom? You're, and I start thinking about it when you said that, and it's an interesting thought process that you're saying, but how old was LeBron when he was playing on that team at that time? What, 1920? He, was, he never played to college, so I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he was like, he's in his early, let's just say he's 19 to 20 years old. That would put his mom, let's just say she had him as a young kid. Uh, let's say, you know, his mom's going to be, let's say, maybe early 40s, late late 30s. You know, it's a man and a woman, whatever. Yeah, but it changes yeah. everything in the locker room. Yeah, you just scored 30 points and you're the best player. Yeah, but I fucked your mom. <laughs> <laughs> that's No, that's different if you play for a different team. You're on that team, you're keeping the love in the house, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the leader of this team. Keeping the love. Yeah, that's all what your mom said last night. <laughs> no, no, it's really when he walks over and he goes, son. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can call you son, because I've been where you've been, where you came out. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, now we're getting bad. No, that's, getting... that's perfectly fine. I love it. Uh, all right, so coming up next. Uh, I think they're going to take a little step back and I got the Portland Trailblazers, 46 wins. You got Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, great backcourt, but nothing special around that. And they've been swept um, in two, set, two straight years. Yeah, nothing special, but I think these guys are poised for another good run. They were uh, a team definitely to watch last year. I really enjoyed watching them. Uh, Grab another they... beer, by the way. Sorry? I'm grabbing another beer, by the way, because I can. Oh, uh, isn't it pretty early where you're at? Yes. Like around 11 o'clock-ish? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's one thirty. Uh, so yeah, one thirty here, so you're, uh, you're enjoying the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Mountain living, my friend. Mountain living. I get it. Uh, so Evan's turn. He's a good player. Uh, I definitely see this team doing very well. Uh, definitely injuries will come into play again. Hopefully you don't get too many injuries. Um, as a team, if you uh, don't want, if 
it's a it's a sleeper team. It's that team that you probably don't want to play in the first round of the playoffs because they can they can beat you if you're not paying attention. Yeah, but why wouldn't you? Right now, they like their last two last two uh, playoffs. They, they've been swept. That's exactly right, what you want to play right now. I, I get. I, I hear what you're saying, but I think this is their their turn. Their turn is coming, uh, and uh, some team is going to be looking, thinking what we're saying, what you're just saying, and be looking ahead to the next round, and they'll be and they'll be beaten by this team. And I, I don't think this team is finished in terms of what they can add to this team because they do have some pieces, young pieces that they can get rid of, and possibly bring in another veteran player to give them that extra boost. So you, how how deep do you think they're going? Uh, I, I won't see them pass the second round, uh, but I, I think I can see them getting through the first round this year. And, of course, it depends on who they're playing. You know, <laughs> I'll make a bet right now. They're one and done. They're one and done? One and done. Mm, I'm going to have to pass on that one. I'm not, I don't feel that strongly no, about that's it. No, that's fine. That's fine. Here's a team that I want to watch more. And I'm very, very intrigued with because I, and I didn't watch much of them the last couple of years, but I, I'm going to force myself to this year. I got the Denver Nuggets, uh, 46 wins, and really a, a lot of that's all about uh, Jokic again, another European, last initial C. Uh, but he did; he led the team in assists, rebounds, points. Uh, they've got a great player in, in Jamal Murray, Gary Harris. Isaiah Thomas is now there, and we'll see what he we'll see what he still got left. They have Paul Millsap. Um, this is a very balanced team. They're a very balanced team, and and the two you know I really love the fact that they added Isaiah Thomas. I think he was still feeling it last year mm-hmm. in terms of the injury. He wasn't quite himself, and uh, with the passing of his sister the year before, oh, I think yeah. he was just still finding himself again. And I, I think I see him breaking out again and being that player he was a few years ago um, on this team and they get that type of play this is a team to be uh, uh, you have to watch out for it, definitely mm-hmm. and then they they are a good shooting team especially with Jamal Murray he's showing that he can be a, a way better than average player uh, hopefully he can make another step and really push some uh, push himself into um, into a better position. I definitely love uh, Millsap. He's a really good defensive player. Definitely, if they end up playing against the uh, playing around some of the better teams like Lakers, of course, uh, Millsap will definitely be a defensive force around uh, LeBron. He won't stop him, but he definitely will slow him down. What do you think? No, I I, I totally think that. Uh, like I said, Denver is one of those teams that doesn't excite me because I, I don't see them that much, but. What, uh, they they are one of a few teams that I'm going to force myself to watch a lot in you know the league pass because I really definitely yeah. I, 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 now that you're talking about it, I think I will also to take a little bit more uh, time to watch this team um, especially with the Canadian on the team of course because <laughs> I did like what I've seen with Jamal Murray in the uh, early stages of this uh, preseason I, he has a great form and his shooting touch is amazing. Okay, so I got them at 46. Uh, I've also got another team at 46. Uh, we just talked about it, the Lakers. Uh, there's LeBron's in probably the first time where there's not a lot of pressure on him. Yeah, he doesn't have to do much at all. Uh, just kind of be himself, and uh, you know, he's no pressure to no pressure to win at all. Uh, I think the only pressure at this point is for this team to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And uh, that's it. And Which where they make the playoffs, I, I don't think it really matters. Yeah, I mean, they're also too like uh, gearing up for uh, like another cap run, trying to get some like another second uh, second player. Uh, so a lot of this season is just to see the development of Ingram Ball, uh, and, you know, Alonzo Ball, and hopefully you don't see too much of Lavar. Yeah, I think Lavar is going to be. Uh... A pitch to the corner this time. LeBron's are already starting on that front, and uh, I don't think you're going to hear much about it. Uh, but uh, I think, honestly, with this team, they have a really good young core. Mm-hmm. Uh, LeBron is only going to elevate them in terms of their play. Uh, I think the person, honestly, at this point, who's going to be the number two scorer or the number two guy, even though he may probably be off the bench, is going to be a Rondo. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Rondo's going to make a really... Uh, a big uh, splash and kind of make a good comeback on this team. Uh, funny enough, Lance Stevenson. 
I, know. Uh, I never thought I'd see him on a team with, with LeBron. <laughs> but uh, I, I see this guy making the difference in terms of the defense uh, for this team as well. It's guarding the other team's best player, especially uh, in the later parts of the game. Yeah, the only thing that uh, at, at this point you have to wonder about, and you have to, is the Milo John LeBron. And it just, it, we're not that far removed from when Kobe Bryant hit that wall where he was like this elite player and got hurt and then he wasn't. And this could happen. I mean, yeah, it, it can happen, but I don't think you're going to see not this year either. LeBron right now, though. No, I don't either. I think you're going to see teaching LeBron. You're going to see LeBron who's going to pay is going to play maybe a 30 out of 40 minutes in the game. He's not going to tire himself out. Uh, the expectation is just to make the playoffs. It's not to be number one because they, they obviously can't be. So right now, LeBron is going to you know hold on to his bullets and save it all for the playoffs and uh, and teach these kids to be a playoff team. And, and this is definitely his team. Sorry, Luke Walton, but this is his team. Yeah. And eventually, LeBron will hit the wall, sort of like a, you know, like an Asian woman holds their looks for a long period of time, and then all of a sudden, once they see that wall, holy shit, they put the foot on the gas pedal. <laughs> Wham! Who are you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like Kobe did. Uh, uh, it's going to happen to LeBron, it just won't happen this year. But yeah, this first time where LeBron has to think, hey, you know what, I don't have to take my team to the finals in what, how many years? Yeah, well, I, I'm pretty sure... In his mind, he wants to go there. Of course, but he knows that he doesn't have he doesn't have to be the number one seed. He doesn't have to take his team there. He knows just getting his team to the playoffs and possibly winning one round is all he really needs to do. That's his goal for this year. He doesn't even have to like get a home home court in the first round. No, I even. don't think so. I don't think they will. With the teams in the West, I don't think they're going to be that great of a team. Okay, so now we got our top four. Uh, I got Oklahoma City at forty-seven wins. I kind of feel really good for this fan base. After here's a team that had Durant, Westbrook, and Harden, and they traded Harden way too early. But that's that's oh, another story for another time. I, I think this team made the biggest mistake that any team can do. I mean, totally. They they trade away how many players if they still had them right now I think they'd be the best team in the league yeah yeah um, I mean in my mind uh, yes they are a really really good team uh, they're with you know with George that's gonna be great he wants uh, to be there. I still think they're missing that third guy and that, that's a great thing with Paul George I mean like who thought he was gonna resign with Oklahoma City I didn't. I didn't, but it's kind of like, you know, you don't realize it's really home until it's about the time to leave. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I guess that's what it was with him. I mean, they got Schroeder, which I really do like. He's a good player. Uh, Patterson, great shooter off the bench. Hopefully he doesn't choke in the playoffs like he did before. Uh, Fulton, again, a good player. Um I just think it's important with this team uh, that injury is going to be the biggest issue. And right now, I believe Westbrook is injured. I don't know how for how long, or if he's a game time uh, if he's a game time announcement. But uh, at this point, I I know he had a I think it was an ankle issue. So this team is one sprained ankle. Uh, away from not doing anything, and um, that's the that's the scary thing for this team. Like Westbrook is everything for this team. Uh, I think Definitely. for this year he he is a few. I'm just trying to think right now where he's landing. Westbrook uh, should uh, is looking like he's gonna hopefully break a few records this year uh, in the triple double, uh, but I don't think he's going to catch up to uh, Michael Jordan or um, Magic this year when it comes to the triple doubles. Uh, actually, I think it was Magic. He needs 27 more triple doubles to catch up to Magic. Yeah, they're good. Actually, oh? not, yeah, actually, one of the things I like about, uh, or interesting going back to George, there's a player that just said, you know what, I'd rather not play with LeBron. 
And there's a there's that that'll be sort of interesting. I don't think it's that. Much. I don't know if he really. Said, I don't know if he did, he didn't want to play with LeBron or he really liked playing with Westbrook. I don't know. I mean, you know, that's the question. When you're that when you're that second level player like George is, it, it, it's sort of hard to sort of go to that elite guy. It takes a special player to sort of do that. And it, it's, it's, it's interesting. It, it, like LeBron, whoever he gets is that number two and he will. There's some concessions that had to be made. One thing I tell like about Oklahoma city, Steven Adams, an even more masculine Jason Momoa. <laughs> like, how is yeah, that even I, I can see that. Uh, Steven Adams is just a beast. Uh, I, I like this guy. He can score. Uh, he's had some amazing picks. I've seen some guys hit the ground afterwards. Um, I definitely like him. I would love him on our, uh, on our team or on my team if, if I had a team. <laughs> right. uh, but definitely, this, this is a team that is going to be great. But, again... Uh, it is like this for every other team, but they just cannot afford to lose one of their great, their good players for any period of time. Right. Uh, you know, they, they just can't survive without it. You know, a la Restbook. Oh, love that player. Like, absolutely love that player. Uh, so Definitely. We've got our top three. Uh, Utah Jazz, I got them at 48 wins. Surprised a lot of people last year. And... Uh, that's another one of those teams where I don't watch much and I'm going to force myself to watch a lot more defense. I loved great defense, but at the same time, it's not sexy. Rudy Gobert is the defending defensive player of the year. I'm going to force myself to really watch him a lot more and, you know, paired up with, uh, with Donovan Mitchell. If he does, if he even steps up or does the same with what he did last year. Uh, definitely. Uh, I mean, Again, another team I don't watch a lot of. They're on the West. Uh, different time zone. I get to watch them when they come to Toronto or if they're playing somebody in the East. Uh, a lot of faces I don't recognize really well. But, uh, you know, I had a really good time when I did go to see a game in Utah. Uh, great building, great crowd. Uh, but, uh, you know, how can you live in Utah when beers are less than 5% alcohol? I, well, I, I can't even imagine that, first off. But when you were there... Hey, have you, you ever tried, ever been to Utah? I've driven through Utah. Uh, no, actually, well, yeah, I've been to Utah actually twice. I, I saw, I went to, like, not Salt Lake City so much, but, like, in the south, uh, some of the most beautiful countryside I've ever seen. But sorry, Yeah, it's gorgeous, but, uh, you, the, yeah, beers are, I believe, less than 4%. They're, like, 2 and 3%. <laughs> oh, well, they, you lost me there. Uh, like, oh, me too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at that point, I switched over to wine. <laughs> oh, the thing with Utah, and maybe this is just my experience, I, I've always sort of found that, like, when I'm in the United States, like, and we have this great reputation in Canada of being some of the nicest people. I've been treated great everywhere I've ever gone in the U.S., except when mm -hmm. I'm in Utah, where it just seems like they know I'm not Mormon. And you, and you've seen yeah. me. I'm about as pale as they come. And they know. <laughs> yeah, they, they know. I'm not one of them. It, it was it was really strange. And that was actually, uh, even the first time I was there, that was with my ex-wife, who was uh, garbage white trash. But that's another story for another time. Oh, you have one of those, too. <laughs> well, <laughs> mine wasn't white trash. <laughs> but you never, Still trash, though. Well, you never met, you never met uh, number one, or as everyone sort of calls Pauline, the significant upgrade. Well, you know, you're one of the lucky guys to get that upgrade. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for mine. Um, uh, I think the draft's happening later this year. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, so when you were in Utah, did you say you were the backup point guard? Uh, yeah, uh, the backup point guard to the backup point guard to the backup point guard. So, therefore, I was uh, about uh, the second level in the stands with a bottle of wine in my hand. <laughs> it called up from the D-League. <laughs> uh, probably the triple D league. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you were hoping for that night, triple D. Uh, yeah, oh, it's definitely. Uh, Utah does have a uh, very good looking uh, women there. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, yeah, but we digress. So, yeah, I got Utah doing really well, possibly surprising. They're also, they're sort of my Milwaukee of the West. They have. 
if everything goes right, they could get to the finals in the West. Not to the finals in the overall. That won't happen. But it could happen just with overall great play. Also, too, if uh, you know Gobert even takes another step up. The best player that yeah, most people don't know. Definitely. Um, this is a team... I agree with you. If they play really well, they don't have a lot of flaws. Uh, they can go to the uh, the uh, Western uh, uh, final. But uh, I, again, just like some of the teams I was talking about before, they are still one elite player away from being that team mm-hmm. that can legitimately make it there. And then I'm not even talking about winning. I'm talking make it there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, another team where I can like. I just don't understand what these teams are doing when they're not looking at a butler and what he can do for a team like this. Uh, he can literally make them, I would say, legitimate, uh, you know, guys who can make it to the Western final. Uh, can they beat, you know who? <laughs> yeah. Probably not. Oh, who can? And, uh, but anything's possible with injuries. And, you know, this is a team who is pretty young. Uh, but they have a lot in front of them that is pretty young too. Uh, so this is where you have to make a choice and you know go out and grab someone like a Butler to see if you can make a difference. And I know Butler's coming up, coming up a lot, but I just think a lot of the wrong teams are looking at him. So, so when you were in Salt Lake City, like because uh, it's mm-hmm. a team called the Utah Jazz, so like was the Jazz scene really strong in Salt Lake? <laughs> well, uh, so to be honest with you, I did check. Uh, it wasn't a very big or, or large jazz scene. Uh, I believe the youth uh, jazz uh, was in uh, New Orleans at one point. They were, uh, that's yeah. where they had the jazz <laughs> that's, where, that's where the name came from. Yeah. They're, they're, so the name followed, uh, so they became the Utah Jazz. So, yeah, Utah is not necessarily the uh, best state for jazz. Anyone listening, you really want to go to New Orleans. Um, but uh, that is the uh, story of it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I guess the Utah Mormons just didn't really click, so. No, no, or the light beers. <laughs> <laughs> the Utah near beers. You know, how does jazz and light beer work? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It just seems like I need a cigar and uh, some bourbon for that. But that's oh, another story. Oh, boy, yeah. I think that's Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> any, any day that ends with a Y. So, obviously, the big two uh, – it's either going to be Houston or Golden State with the most wins. Uh, I've got Houston um, finishing second. I think it's barring an injury, which, again, I think, uh, was it uh, Houston does have an injury that they're contending with right now. Uh, and I'm not sure what's the timeline on that, but it should be very interesting at the uh, at the beginning. Uh, is Harden uh, Harden was injured? Is he gameplay for this uh, week? Uh, you know, not, uh, I'm I'm not really sure. Yeah, because he was injured for a time, or still is injured right now. Uh, I'm just wondering how long can they, uh, you know, be able to play competitive ball without him? Because let's be honest, in the West, you can't afford you can't have to lose you cannot afford to lose too many games in a row. No. Uh, cause you're going to be uh, tooth to the nail to fight to get into that second place. Uh, there are too many good teams in the West. Yeah. And essentially it's, uh, it's, it's going to be that dog fight for the, the number one seed to a point. Yeah. And I guess we'll, we'll do golden state and Houston at the same time. Uh, with Houston, I got them at 58 golden state at 60. And it's not like either, t- especially golden state, golden state could, could easily win a lot more, but why? Uh, they don't need to. Exactly. Uh, they don't. Definitely. You know what, quite honestly, Golden State, I know it sounds funny, but I could see Golden State saying, all right, you know, rest, just get ready for the playoffs, and I could see them in third place in the uh, in the West and still dominate. Yeah, cause, and they're going to be and they're gonna be considered the favorite. And I'm trying to remember, yeah. like, sometimes when you, you go on those 20, 20 game win, or 20 to 15 game win streaks, then there's all this other pressure to keep winning and then push when you don't really need to. And Golden State's done this, been there, they know how to coast. And that's not a bad thing in basketball. It's not. Uh, it's like, I know the one that, remember, was I think it was a couple years ago, when Popovich, was, it was a nationally televised game, and then he sat his big three. Mm-hmm. 
And as much as that was bad for that was, the game that was itself, the game in Miami, right? I think so. Yeah, and but it was bad for bad for that. But it realistically, as Popovich said, it's like, well, I'm playing to win the whole thing. I, you get it. So, right. If Golden State wanted to win 75 games, they probably could. But then why do that? And why put your foot on the gas pedal for the whole season and then run a potential risk later? Exactly. I mean, this is going to be a team that are, their points in terms of what they have to prove is all in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, the, when LeBron comes to town, they're going to beat him down. Uh, same thing with um, Houston. Uh, but I don't think they have any reason to do anything except for close for this year. Keep healthy. Uh, if anybody's hurting, don't play them unless unless you absolutely have to. Right. Um, uh, there's just just no reason for any of them to uh, anything like this to happen. Um, looks like Harden's back on the floor. He should be he should be in game game playing uh, for. Um, he should be playing the. I think it's a Tuesday or Wednesday game for him. So I think there's like three questions here. Uh, question number one with Houston, Carmelo Anthony, uh, not one of my favorite players, but I still think he's a first ballot hall of famer. Yes. Because mellow, uh, mellows, mellow and defense equals nothing. Right. And you know, the only one who's actually worse defensively, but he doesn't get the, the, the slack for it is Harden, but he doesn't have to be, I suppose. But so he does, doesn't have to be, but, uh, this team, just something about this team that is like doesn't. It's like uh, they don't. They. It's like they have a good team. They have good players. They play really well, but just something about this team doesn't allow me to believe that they can do uh, what it what it takes to win it all. Sorry, I'm going to crack open. You know, like uh, uh, well, if I yes. saw this team against LeBron. On the Lakers that he have right now, I think they would struggle. And they beat them, but they would struggle. Yeah, Car- Carmelo, he's got to understand that he's not a top twenty-five player anymore. He's barely a starter on a good team. Yeah, and that's not um, a bad thing. That's, you're still a good NBA player. I just think Carmelo is going to be one or two. Like he, hopefully, he plays his role. And he could be that deciding factor for this team, but uh, I think he is a ball hug, and mm-hmm. uh, he wants to get his numbers. And he's a crybaby, and if he doesn't get his numbers, uh, he's going to cry about it. Which is a shame so, because a selfless Carmelo, oh my God, what an asset that would be! And it still could happen. I, I and we're we're going based on his past because again, Vince Carter at age forty one being the player that he is. I never would have called that at it, it, when he was tw- in his 20s. Who would No, not even. Yeah. So, I mean, it's possible that he could sort of do that. Carmelo's, ne- Carmelo's been a winner in the Olympics. He's won at Syracuse, but he's never won in the NBA level. Right. But you have to remember, uh, in the Olympics, and I'm not even saying necessarily Syracuse because that's a whole different animal. Um when you're playing in the Olympics, he was playing with other great players sure. who were better than him. Not just one or two, no, but, but a lot of them. I always want to bring up that up with Carmelo because a lot of people say, well, he never won. Well, no, he did. Uh, the, yeah, I, but he wasn't the... At, at that point, he knew his role. He wasn't the best player on the Well, team. yeah, but in those things with the Olympics, they sort of like let him be the star when it needed to be. I mean, like, regard, like realistically... If the U.S. the U.S. will always have the best players in every tournament when it comes to that internationally. It's just a matter of sort of like figuring out those rules and doing it the best way. Right. Um, exactly. Yeah, and Car- Car- I don't know. I, and I, I here I'm de- I said I didn't like Carmelo and I'm defending him like crazy right now. Uh, he's I I want to go back to Houston. Actually, the one player that I think can make another big step up. Is Clint Capella? I love this guy. Uh, definitely, he will be a force. But another guy I'm just thinking of as well, and oh, that they're gonna—it was a, 
that they're going to miss is Ariza. Uh, oh, last year he definitely. made he was kind of the balance on that team. Uh, the guy was playing defense. The you know the guy would make the extra pass. I, I really think they're going to miss him this year. What do you think? I do. T- no, I agree. That's sort of why I've uh, Houston. Even though Houston had more wins than Golden State, that's why I've got Houston at number two. Uh-huh. That that's why. Not necessarily because Golden State isn't that much better. Because I think they're going to coast because they can. Houston just there are some question marks there. I mean, we're probably going to get a Golden State Houston West final again, which is great. I will love it. But it would not shock me if Oklahoma City or Utah sort of sneak in there in Houston's spot. I, I, I can see that happening. I can probably probably see more so Oklahoma City than Utah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think U- Utah needs another player in order to do it. Um, but definitely the firepower is there in Oklahoma to do it. Okay. Um, so I, uh, yeah. Any chance in your mind? any of these teams upset Golden State? No. Unless there's injuries, no. That's not happening. No? Not happening? Okay. I agree with you as well. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, because that's a great thing with Golden State right now. We're not looking at the Chicago Bulls of 1997 where people were getting older. This is still a relatively young team. They're very young still. Yeah. So the only question I have with Golden State is... I want to see how Boogie uh, DeMarcus Cousins fits into this. I don't know. Um, just from the way, uh, just the way he played last year, I think he's going to fit right in on this team. I, I think he's not going to, once he starts playing, I think he's due to come back and start uh, get on the floor. I'm not just start playing, but get on the floor in no, uh, early November. Mm-hmm. I think um, we're going to have, we're going to see it uh, very soon. Uh, this is a team that actually can afford to play, like can afford to give him a lot of minutes so he can get back to uh, his level of playing, uh, unlike some of the other teams that are going to be uh, tooth to the nail to make it to the playoffs. So he made a really good choice. Uh, he's going to, you know, one year there, win a championship, come out as a free agent, he's going to get paid. Yeah. And I think the one yeah. thing I like about Cousins too, where oh, there's a lot of, What's what's what I'm looking for? There's a lot of people who sort of like don't like Demarcus because he he'll say what's on his mind. He's he's uh comes off like a thug. But you know what? Here's a guy who knew full well that I'm going to go to Golden State in in like a fourth or fifth role. He wants yeah. to win. He's got something to prove. He he's got a massive chip on his shoulder that he's had for years. He's going to do what it takes. I, that's yeah, I, I think, think so too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, now, I mean, for me, this team's weakest point, because I'm just going to point it out, uh, they're so strong uh, with their starters and their first two guys off the bench. After that, it's a pretty big drop-off. Yeah, uh, after Iguodala, yeah. Iguodala and Livingston, uh, after those two, I think it's a fairly huge drop-off in terms mm-hmm. of talent. Um uh, and it would be interesting because we're talking about coasting. Uh, the ability for this team to coast like they did a few years ago, they had a phenomenal bench. And uh, I think that's what's going to cause them to have to play a little bit more minutes than they really want to. Yeah. and Therefore giving chance to more injury. Okay, so all right, do we are we safe to say that we both think Golden State's going to win the West? I, I would say 100%, yeah. Okay. Or 99, there's no such thing as 100%. Yeah, geez, we, we don't have a third bet here. Uh, all right, so here's my third question, though, when I said all this stuff. Third question. Uh, James Harden, who looks, uh, he has that giant beard, and he still looks 18. And that beard looks so pristine. Do you think it still smells like uh, Khloe Kardashian? Because guaranteed, <laughs> no, cause guaranteed, guaranteed, no, guaranteed that, like, that uh, when Khloe said, hey, you got to go down on me, he went, okay. <laughs> Oh, boy. Uh, you know what? That would be a question I would have to ask his new girlfriend. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going in there to smell it. I'm sorry. He's <laughs> got that oh, boy. perfect afro sheen. It just looks so awesome. Oh, jeez. Uh, is the Kardashians all over basketball or what? <laughs> uh, 
I, I do want to sort of like take this opportunity to say that the Kardashian curse in terms of sports does not really exist. As a Saints fan, Kim was dating Reggie Bush when Reggie Bush became the Super Bowl champion. Big Saints fan here. And the same calendar year, Lamar Odom with Chloe was a champion. True. And uh, it'd be the easy. Lamar, Lamar Odom is also, what, a candy freak now? And oh, Is he playing anywhere? <laughs> no. No. No, oh, I, don't, I don't think so. I, I don't even think uh, that that uh, three on three league wants him. That's crazy. Uh, so hold on, there's one, two, three, four. No, no it's three Kardashians, right? I don't know. I I, I think what's and then there's Jenner, Kardashian Jenner. Oh, okay, so Caitlyn Jenner. I don't know who she's dating. No, can I Caitlyn? No, sorry. <laughs> There's the older sister. I forget what her name is. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I- I'm okay not knowing my Kardashian stuff. Yeah, I think she's the best looking one of all. Uh, <laughs> That's what I was gonna say, about to say. Which one? Uh, I think... Was it Kendall? No. All I, There's all, the oldest all, one. All I know so, is right now, Chloe, who was not the most attractive one, I kind of think she, she is now. She's a ton of, ton of weight. Well, it's not just that. I mean, she's she she looks good. You know, I I I think she looks good, and she doesn't look plastic. No, she doesn't. But uh, it is Kardashians. I might not even get within a uh, hundred feet of them in my life. So thank God. <laughs> I I actually did with Kim because I was doing my old repping job. And she was at Sherwood oh. Gardens. So you got within 100 feet of Kim? 100, yeah, 100 feet of that, but I didn't know who she was. Oh. Well, that was like so many years ago. I didn't, I didn't know that. I should have known. could have got me into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. And on that note, uh, so it looks like we only have two bets, so it's going to be an even, an even Steven, and it's almost time for you to pick up your kids, bud. Uh, yes, it is. I got a couple. Of, I got about an hour to go. Enough time right, to uh, so, have an afternoon nap. All right. Well, sounds great. Well, Andrew, thanks so much for being on this show, and I'm sure we'll do this again. Uh, definitely, and we'll see how the season pans out. Maybe we'll uh, do something mid-season. Uh, definitely. And, uh, see how far our, our bets are coming and uh, where we land in terms of uh, our Toronto Raptors being in first place, which I think <laughs> it, they still can do. They can do it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the buck stops here, and we'll be chatting soon. All right. Talk to you later.